Hi and welcome to this video which is about my homebrew computer implementing X modem. So on the screen what you see here is uh, three displays. One is my homebrew computer connected to the monitor and as a reminder there's the homebrew. It's a 6502 machine implemented on breadboard, uh, my own design and uh, housed in a BBC micro case and keyboard and it's outputting to the monitor and it's already booted up as you can see. Uh, also here I have um, a web page with Xmodem uh, because I want to talk a little bit about Xmodem and explain uh, what's happening and also a extra putty terminal connected to the serial port. So my homebrew is connected to the PC by a serial and extra putty is used to communicate over the serial line. Now I wanted to implement Xmodem because um, it will make it easier for me to transfer files from the PC to the homebrew uh, without uh, having to pop the SD card and put it into the PC and transfer files that way. Um, I needed a transfer protocol that was still around and uh, Xmodem is still implemented by many terminal emulators. Uh, you can see here there's various options uh, in extra putty I can send or receive in Xmodem. Um, what I've got here then on the homebrew computer is the actual um, protocol implemented as a DFLAT program. So what's uh, on screen now is just the program that uh, is implementing the uh, Xmodem receive protocol. Uh, so the homebrew will act as a receiver and you can see most of the protocol fits into just one page of uh, dflat which is a basic local language hopefully you can actually read that it's not very complicated and uh, indeed that was the x modem um, design goal was to be as simple as possible because it was designed back in 1977 by a guy called Ward Christensen and he wanted to keep it simple so that it could be implemented by computers uh, of the day. And given now it's 2022, so this is basically a 45 year old protocol. And you can see some information about the protocol here on the web page. Um, I'm using the 16-bit CRC version of Xmodem, which was uh, a minor refinement. And there's some information here about how that protocol works. And that's what the code does is implement this protocol. So let's um, go ahead and actually try and uh, transfer a file. Um, I'll go to Xmodem and click on send and then I'm going to pick a file called stars and on the PC side, on the homebrew side, I'm going to invoke this routine called receive uh, in ASCII and I'm going to call the receive file test dot txt and when I press enter on the when I when I when I try to send the file stars.prg you can see it's starting there 0 of 10 if I press enter on the homebrew the protocol starts transmitting so the homebrew has sent a character to start the transfer and now the terminal is sending the data back and you can see it's completed that was 10 packets completed in a few seconds and each packet is essentially 128 bytes so this is the protocol here uh, it's the the file gets broken up into 128 by byte packets with a, uh, a header uh, a packet number uh, a co packet number a complement as part of a checksum and then a 16-bit CRC and it's now received the file on the homebrew. Now each packet is only 128 bytes and you could see the packets being transferred. Um, it was taking maybe half a second or, or thereabouts. Why would it take so long given the serial line is 19,200 broad? Um, the main reason is this CRC because if I show you the pseudocode or the sample code for the CRC, you can see that you go through every byte in the packet that's been received, 128 bytes, and then for each byte there's a inner loop which is doing some shifts and uh, CRC calculations 
eight times. So that's eight times 128, which is um, a thousand, uh, more than a thousand iterations per byte. Uh, sorry, per packet that's been received. So that takes some time, uh, and that's one of the reasons why it was as slow as it was. Otherwise, um, it would have been a lot quicker. And previously, my experiments didn't bother with the CRC, uh, and it was transferring a lot quicker. So I might have to transfer this code, uh, at least part of it, into assembly to make it uh, uh, usefully fast. So now that I've transferred a file, let's do a dir and just see what's there. We can see there is a file called test.txt and it's 1084 bytes. And in fact, it's a program, so I should be able to load this. So let's load this program called test.txt. It was called stars.prg on the PC, of course. But the receiving machine, my homebrew, is calling it text.txt. So let's load this. And it says it can't find it because it's called test.txt. Ha ha. Right, test.txt. There we go. And there's the program. It's loaded it in. Uh, and I'll just, uh, how about we just do something? Make sure it actually works. And it works perfectly fine. So there we go. I managed to do a transfer of a file from the PC to the homebrew and successfully save that to the SD card. And now I'm able to even load that program and run it. So it should help with my uh, transfers between the PC and the homebrew so I don't have to keep popping the SD card and putting it into the PC and vice versa. Uh, I think next thing I will do is to implement this in machine code and make it a lot quicker. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, that give you that gave you a bit of an insight about uh, Xmodem, uh, an amazing old protocol that's still around to the present day and usefully handy for 8-bit uh, homebrew machines like mine. Thanks very much for watching this video.